what we're going to do is go over some photos. And um, some of these photos are from uh, individuals in this audience. And what we're going to do is take a look um, kind of area to area at um, things that have been done. I'm going to also um, review some other additional um, means to make long-term adaptations to your home to make life more accessible. Uh, and then I want to open it up and allow all of you who've been through this how you have gone through this and what your experience was and perhaps let us know what the best things and, and most gratifying modifications that have been done to really bring your life back. So um, I think what we'll do, we are going to look first at the outdoors. Um, so uh, outdoors and entries. So we're going to check this out. This is a wonderful ramp that was done um, and it, although I didn't measure it, it sure seems to me that that um, looks to be the um, typical indoor, outdoor. Are you all aware of the modifications that if you have an outdoor ramp you want Ideally, you'd like it for what, every one inch of uh, rise, you want 20 inches of run uh, indoors, one inch of rise, 12 inches of run. But, but that's the ideal. The ADA po um, policies are 1 to 12. So this looks probably 1 to 12. And um, you'll notice that the, uh, the edges have been blocked in order to prevent somebody from um, rolling off and, and uh, we know that that has happened and there's also a pad uh, at the transition to go on up to the entry and there's a really nice uh, looks like a little addition for the threshold uh, that was added here. So just kind of backing up I would say convert your gravel walks to concrete for all weather access. Uh, move the mailbox to an accessible point. Construct uh, your ramp and access to the garage, carport, and entry to allow sheltered entrance into and exit from a vehicle continuously to the entrance of the home. Uh, install a ramp. We just reviewed that. Uh, and no or low thresholds, less than a half of an inch here. I just love this. This is beautiful. Um, it really it really brings the outdoor um, to the individuals here, and I would venture was that about two feet or so that you had to overcome was uh, yeah. About 28 inches, I think. yeah, just beautiful. So for safety, there's the barrier from coming off. It's nice and wide. It's uh, that all-weather um, decking, just beautiful. And it's my understanding in Washington State, we can build a ramp without a building permit, given that it's um, not an extensive, very long ramp. And not commercial. And not commercial, yeah. But this is really beautiful. You did a fantastic job here. And this is another perspective. Just looks great. And now this was a, another um, home that the person really did not want his home to have ramps and appear to be somebody, the owner, to ha be in a wheelchair. And so they went about this a little bit differently and I think it looks great. This is really a unique way to deal with the differing height. Um, it would be interesting uh, to see how that is in wet or snowy weather. <laughs> that would be my concern. Uh, so we want, um, and I'm looking at this, the entrance is there. You can't really tell but it really does appear to me that it's a nice wide door. Okay, so this is a transition, um, and I think this is just as, as the others. They've got the um, guard to prevent a wheel from um, 
if you hit that it would uh, steer your chair back. Okay. Yeah, this looks like a well-built and just not even a transition at all. That's great. Yeah, do you think it's a, is it a steep? Yeah. Yeah. Up to. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So uh, we were talking that the um, there are some codes that don't allow for you to build right up or beyond the um, sidewalk. And so the hypothesis here is that it was probably shortened in order and probably steeper than the uh, recommended grade um, to accommodate this. Nice and wide. We can, can't have too much space. I'm, so this um, looks like a door that, you know, the recommendations are for doors to be at least 32 inches wide. Um, the bigger, the better. And this is beautiful. Um, for those of you who were saying that gardening was really important, a nice raised garden like this is beautiful. And, of course, I like lavender and the watermelon element. So you've, you're doing your feng shui as well. <laughs> um, and again, more raised beds. And you want to make sure that there's nice, uh, plenty of space around furniture and furnishings in order to easily get around. And of course, the kitty cat. And it looks like there's a, a slight grade, but um, very clean and unobtrusive pathway. Okay. Now this is a lift. And it goes up, what, um, one stair or what? Uh, it goes up, that one goes up about um, 24 inches. Okay. So it doesn't show here the door, uh, but I just want to touch in. You're standing in the doorway. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, that we want nice wide doors, swing away hinges to allow wider access, uh, the lever or D-handle loops rather than knobs for those with limited hand coordination or strength. And now this is another lift within the home. And how far does this lift go? Um, 10 feet. Okay. And that gets you up to your loft. Is that right? Okay. Okay. So this is, uh, uh, and some of you um, have a great deal of experience with the um, environmental control units. Uh, there are basic X10 technology on up to these very complex um, uh, home access uh, modules. And I'm not going to touch too much on this other than that it's out there and it makes people's lives extremely comfortable in terms of what it's capable of doing right now. Um, you can answer your phone, you can turn fans on, you can turn the stereo on, you can work with your computer. There's all kinds of uses for um, home automation. So um, let's just finish up with the outdoor and we'll, we'll move on. That um, um, There are keyless entries now that you can get at Home Depot that are like the key fobs that you use for your car. They're very inexpensive and um, it's a great, uh, simple solution for those of you who still have to deal with locks um, and need somebody's help to do it. Um, and you'll want to look at uh, getting weighted, balanced doors so that they don't swing closed immediately on you. Um, and hopefully the garage and the entrance can be at the same level. 
Um, we, uh, also a nice low-tech solution is to add a 36-inch string to your door knob so that as you're cruising out, you grab it and close the door on the way out. Uh, if you use a van with a side lift, then you really do need a two-car garage, as you know. So let's go through. Um, there are a whole variety of different kinds of lifts, but this is one that's uh, a track system that's been installed. I think this is the Guardian Voyager from what it looks like. This saves your caregiver so much on their back. Um, and in many ways, it can really streamline uh, your morning routine of getting to the bathroom and showering and not having to do a multitude of transfers from equipment to equipment. And uh, this is a TV that's been mounted. And the bedside controls on a swing away arm, and then they're brought down into place. Uh, for this person to be able to operate their things. And this is this uh, microphone, uh, the swing away boom that can be put in place. And uh, this is part of the HAL, the home ac access um, device. And front loading, washer and dryer. Uh, so, um, I can only add that uh, they actually now make one, they make a combination of washer and dryer in the same unit that's front loading. And here's a, an example of a chair lift and a sliding board. Okay, so the bathrooms. Nice, large size turnaround space um, that we've got the uh, handheld shower and it, we've got the various things to be able to access things quickly and easily and be able to turn around and it looks like in this the bathroom on the right uh, they probably use a rolling shower commode chair with um, and this is great Yeah, so you don't have to have another room for all your equipment. Great. And then this is an example. It looks like um, this is a creative use of space. This is wonderful. Another one of those wet rooms that you can um, spray and get things completely wet to a certain extent and um, get your shower done here. And look, it's beautiful too. Okay, and so the bathroom should have at least a 5x5 five five turnaround free area in order to be able to maneuver and uh, get to the items. There should be a, a non-skid floor. Uh, there should be easy-to-grasp uh, easy cabinet hardware, uh, extra lighting and color contrast for maximized visibility. Uh, you want to install your bathroom door so they open outward so that if you fall, and some of us have, uh, that the door doesn't close on you. Um, and uh, it makes for uh, getting in to help you uh, quite difficult, so an outward-facing uh, door. Uh, the vanity and sink. Let's see if, we, oh, good, perfect. Um, nice uh, space, for, knee space here and easy to access everything. And it looks like this has the uh, PCV, P, PVC pipe. So um, while that reduces your risk of burns, you really want to cover up your pipes. Um, so this is one style of sink. There are cantilevered sink and um, counters. So the knee space that we're talking about, we want to allow as much space as possible to roll under. And so 34 inch height is kind of considered standard um, from the countertop to the floor and 29 inches from the bottom of the sink to the floor. A vanity or wall hung sink needs to be at least 17 inches uh, in depth to allow space for the knees. Place uh, the sink as close as possible in front of the vanity cabinet to allow the user easier reach to the sink and, and faucet. Um, levered faucets uh, for easy access. 
Uh, a removable cabinet allows conversion from a regular vanity to an accessible lavatory. Um, you can simply mount the sink to the reinforced wall. Pedestal sinks are ideal. Uh, make sure exposed hot water pipes should be insulated and or covered. Install lever faucets, grab bars. Um, typically the max weight is 250 pounds. And here's more examples. This is great. Good space. Aha. Uh -huh. Is that duct tape? That is. Oh, we love duct tape. It'll save everything. So handheld showers, I'm sure you've all, um, oh, this was a good, yeah. So this is great. I would even think that you, if you can come up to, on a side, uh, you can come on a side approach versus front approach with this style of sink. And here are some more examples. This is great. The Lazy Susan. Now, there's some talk about how this inside corner in a kitchen uh, is used, how it can ideally be used. A Lazy Susan is good, but it's still very difficult to get back there. So I've actually seen some examples uh, where it's been uh, boarded off and it's just been a, a work area. So this is just completely cleared out here and uh, it's for prepping food and things like that. Uh, and underneath here, good. So th these are all very good examples. Oh, I'm sorry, go back. Uh, if you can roll back the kitchen sink, yeah. I want to point out that those pocket doors, yes. a lot of people don't know about those and they're really handy because you can either have them closed or open and just roll under. And notice too that we lowered the sink, and that's where I do all my food prep. Oh, great. Okay. So what um, she was saying here is that make sure I have a cord here is that these doors come out and close, or they can get tucked back in easily. Good. And roll out cabinets. Yeah, and these are considered standard anymore, that universal design concept. Um, so what you want to know, uh, think about if you are doing a, a big remodel, kitchen remodel, is whether the space will be shared with an ambulatory person or not, and whether um, you will be wanting to deviate on counter height. Uh, will the sink be accessed by the front or parallel approach? Uh, can the wheelchair user twist their body in order to reach? Um, is the existing kitchen configuration an L-shaped, U-shaped, or galley-style um, configuration? And, of course, controls up front is ideal. Another um, thought with um, stoves is to put a mirror behind your stove top so that you can see what you're cooking. And actually, we'll, I'll show a slide later um, of a person who has mirrors just so that um, they can see more around them. So, love the pantry. This is great. So, uh, the tables were simply shimmed and raised up. And we'll, we're going to show this here. This is another example of raising the table. Um, and I'm going to uh, speak, if you'll notice, the front of this person's wheelchair. There are uh, wheels in order when uh, they maneuver through their house that, um, let's go forward here. I'm going to see if I can get an example. That, uh, that if they do hit walls, that it protects from damage and that they've also installed the kick plates on the, let's go, I'm going to just go forward here and show you. There we go. So this is an example of a kick plate. And it, it has saved the door, obviously. And having put these on uh, my doors a couple of weeks ago, um, it's, a, it's a, I can even install these. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Okay, great. Um, now let's just move on here. 
Uh, this particular person, of course, enjoys uh, the ambient light, and you'll notice that um, uh, that this is a wonderful way to get free heat, especially if you're this is on the southern exposure, um, and uh, it's hard to stay warm here in the northwest. Um, and it also is just beautiful here. So this is the picture from the uh, fellow who likes to have the mirror so that he can be at his dinner table. And when somebody comes in, he's not having to crane or move his chair in order to um, see what's happening. Another a great workstation here. Now this is uh, the use of the quad joy mouth joystick and microphone. And this particular person is graphic designer. And um, you'll see uh, the huge screen computer there. Um, and this is one of his pieces of work. So you'll see that shelving, I mean, storage is essential um, in a home. And accessibility, you can see all the X10 boxes there too, is important. Uh, the swing away hinges uh, will add, it can add up to an inch and a half to a door frame. So these are a great solution if you're just barely getting through the door. That's it's a it's a pretty easy fix then. Okay. And um, Tammy, um, a high and a low peephole, which is important. Safety is very important. So um, this is a a really good adaptation. And here's the string cord. Yeah. And various lever handles. And various thresholds. As you can see, there's many different ways to get over this barrier. Um, and a cemented one. And now this button is for an, in, it's a uh, it opens the door, this button it opens the door, and this person just has to swing his uh, footrest and tap that switch, and it automatically opens the door. We talked about that, and he, uh, switches, higher switches. Ideally, if you can get things mounted up at 32, 34, 36 inches for accessibility, um, and then these simple solutions, adding little D-rings to make uh, things for you to be able to turn them on and off. Lots of extra switches. So uh, this is great for access and being able to turn things on and off. Um, and then this is the um, keyless entry. I just think this is the slickest thing since sliced bread. Storage. Oh, okay, so I spent, I don't know how many hours online trying to find um, the cantilevered uh, closet hangers, that cantilever completely out, and I could not find them. I know they're out there. Um, so this is the hardwired, lowered, um, accessible uh, closet. But they actually do make cantilevered so that the clothing goes up and then it comes down with it's, a, it's really slick. It's just like feather light, so it's not having to take a great deal of upper body strength to pull it down. Storage, more storage. This is like, oh. Nice wide, um, so this is an example of a more contemporary apartment that is considered barrier free. And um, basically, the thing is, is that it has wider hallways, and that is builders' ideas of accessible housing. And I think this particular um, apartment was originally a two bedroom, uh, two bathrooms, and it's been reduced to one bathroom. And uh, talking with some folks, you know, it would be great if there was a water closet, you know, you'd have a separate toilet area and the um, bathtub or shower stall and vanity in another area because then 
you could be doing your bowel program, somebody else could be doing their other grooming um, skills within the confines. Yeah, that's just one of those difficulties. Lazy Susans, of course. Now this is a ratcheting um, shade uh, blinds and you swing to the right and ratchet it open and swings to the left and it closes uh, and the loop is put for limited hand function. Right, and a lot less expensive than the automated ones. So, of course, pets, you um, can raise their food dishes, you can raise their uh, beds and everything so that they can come to you. Uh, <laughs> two of the best accessories, right? A reacher and your service dog. Um, so let's just um, kind of close with just getting some of your ideas. I kind of make this more the um, kind of the odds and ends of accessibility. Highly recommend a uh, fire extinguisher, accessible. Um, I'm the wife of a firefighter, um, and so we practice fire safety in our house. Um, have your address painted on the curb. Have it very accessible and readable from the street. So in an emergency, they're not driving past your house, looking for your address and driving past your house again and again. Um, Install telephone jacks, electrical outlets, approximately six inches higher than standard. Install carbon monoxide detectors and fire detectors as appropriate in your dwelling. Uh, plan an emergency exit for your wheelchair. Um, and oftentimes there's only one accessible exit. Um, and so if there is a second exit, be able to get as far away from your dwelling as possible. Um, and what, what um, I would also recommend is that you contact your, fire, your local fire department and they are more than happy to come out and do a fire safety check in your house. And oftentimes they will um, provide you with stickers so that you can denote on the outside window what is your bedroom. And um, the, uh, we'll talk more about this in um, some of our resources. But uh, fire departments oftentimes um, have benevolent associations within their organizations. And so if you contact your local fire department and ask to talk to the union representative, they can um, um, tell you whether or not they have a benevolent association. And they are more than happy to help with a building things for you. They can assist with uh, minor remodeling and access, uh, but they are uh, more than happy to come out and do that because they want the individuals in their community to be as safe as possible and realize that oftentimes it's a burden and it's a huge financial drain to get these um, accessibility issues taken care of. So just contact them and ask whether or not they can do that for you. Um, We've had, as you well know, about the RAMP program. A gentleman up in Everett um, has started a program. Uh, it's been going for several years now, uh, and they're willing to come out and build ramps as well. So earlier I alluded to I wanted to hear from you about what you found to be the most gratifying and freeing modifications that you have done in your house already. Um, and so I just wanted to throw it out to you because I am certain that you have created many, many things uh, that us OTs don't even think about. So. <laughs> uh, so anyway, between the garage and the main living space was a, a very tight space in, in one of those um, new townhouses that they're building all over Seattle. And so what we did was we took the door out and replaced it with those 
um, clear plastic. They're about uh, 12 inches wide or 18 inches wide, and they just go from the door frame straight down. You often see them at Costco's and uh, and those places between the refrigerated section and oh, sure. the, the rest of the place. And we just put those in between the house and the garage, and it did a great job uh, retaining the heat of the household. And it's just very easy to get a chair through just over a little uh, little ramp there straight into it. And then I can use the garage door opener to get in and out of the oh, house. Oh, great. So you don't have to deal with the actual doorknob. You just have a garage door opener and pop in the door. Yeah, open. to be able to back up, open a door, and then manage it and get through and then deal with a ramp. Exactly. All within three feet. Exactly. So these, these nice, these new townhomes are, are great uh, for a lot of things, but not for wheelchairs. Um, and so this, it was a great, it was inexpensive, easy to mount. You just nail them up to the uh, to the frame there, and they just fall straight down. They they retain heat very nicely, and you can get in and out through the garage. So great. I know you. Oh, I was just going to say, um, you know, for gardening, my raised flower beds and stuff. The um, the fountain features, but um, my my father-in-law built that. I used to have a pool there, and so I um, just designed a, a brick um, uh, flower box area so I could have a fountain in the middle and still do my gardening so my aides would quit pulling, thinking all my flowers were weeds and pulling them off. <laughs> like, nobody touches the fountain area. It's mine. So you've been able to return to mm -hmm. some of your hobbies that and you really built enjoy. A, built up a, um, a garden, just a vegetable garden, too, with raised beds. Yeah. So. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You did a really nice job with Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. A uh, couple comments. Um, I live um, in a small community. I live over on uh, Bainbridge Island. And uh, my first comment was the whole ADA process. Um, I didn't even, I didn't go to that level when requesting some assistance. I went to, for example, the local bank that I bank with in addition to the clinic on the island, the Virginia Mason Clinic. And just, um, I would say, um, put myself in an advocate role and positively articulated my needs. And they put in um, door buttons for, um, for the buildings. But in addition, they put one down low so I can push them with my feet rest. And so um, the turnaround time on both those projects were, were less than six weeks. Wow. So it was, and then again, that could be community-wise or whatnot, um, or just being able to express your needs in a manner. Sure that is, I think, professional, uh, really turned some results. In addition, um, I've worked with the local fire department on the island, uh, and they're in the process of installing uh, a lockbox on the outside of my apartment with keys to get into the apartment. So um, that gets uh, around any kicking of the door down and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So, uh, again, and that was just approaching them, expressing your needs in a way that puts you in a, in a positive light, sort of, you know, here's the buy-in join my journey in and and that's all been really fruitful excellent that's a good uh use of the resources at not a great expense to you in fact it sounds like it was donated yeah there was donated. yeah great actually i actually have a question um since your husband's a fireman um when i lived in hey i'm talking here when i lived what the hell when i lived in new hampshire it was a lot smaller town, but like every year they would call my mom and say, does your daughter live there just in case there's an emergency? So they would know that, you know, this person with a disability at my address. And, um, but I never thought about doing that here. Yeah. And so I had called, the, I guess I called the wrong fire department, and then I never followed up with them again, and then I moved. So um, I guess... Do they have anything like that where you can call and they you can register? You know. Yes. They, so okay. you would contact the fire I think it's a really good idea. bureau yeah. of your local fire department. Every department has that, unless it's a volunteer department, and they're not so much into prevention. But <laughs> I'll see you at the fire. <laughs> so I would contact, and and I know you live out. Uh, Southwest Seattle, and it's really funny with the lines, whether it's Highline or Burien or West or Seattle Fire Department. But we can, you and I can talk about um, getting a hold of the right people. One thing that we did, we wanted to buy a new bed, and we wanted to get uh, one of those newer ones with the pillow top mattress. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't buy a bed frame, a standard bed frame, because it would be too tall. 
So we bought the pillow top mattress and we measured it and then we went to, uh, we live in West Seattle and there's a furniture store in West Seattle that uh, features, uh, car you know, carpenters will make furniture for you. Oh, okay. And so we ordered this bed with um, the, um, the legs on the bed are only like two inches tall but they accommodate the complete height, so it's just a perfect transfer over Excellent. for me. See, good solution, using that universal design concept to make it still be applicable to you. It, it's just, you gotta take it somehow, you gotta get that height some way, or take the height away in some manner, so good. Kind of uh, mattress. You know, that it kind of bypassed memory foam. Memory foam was thought to be the new thing. And, uh, but memory foam, you, when, when you're in it, you're stuck. And the friction to be able to transfer and move in it, you're just like, it does work for uh, pressure management, but it's not just impossible for transfer. So good solution with uh, getting the ability to change the firmness on the bed. We found that the bed stores don't advertise it but they have low profile box springs and you just have to ask it doesn't cost any more ah. so instead of a 12 or 10 inch it's like a 4 inch box spring and it brings the whole bed down oh great okay did everybody hear that over there that's good solution My garage where I work out and I'd always hear noises outside there and it sort of bothered me that I didn't know what was going on so I um, spelled a peephole in my garage too so I can so I can see what's going on if I hear all these noises and everything looking in yeah well I don't know what's going on out yeah. there and so um, you know I don't want to stop my workout but I want to know what's going on so I can sneak a peek out there and smart see what's going on. yeah safety is very important good idea <laughs> yeah Fire. <laughs> I was just, we had a fire safety education thing at work the other day. We had a safety fire thing at work the other day, and I got to actually blow the, I don't know what you call it, but the take the hose out and yep. blow it. And it was this huge thing, and it, when I pulled the lever out and pushed the button, it pushed me back in my chair. <laughs> and so in an emergency situation, I thought, that's not very good. Yeah. So, um, to Lots buy of lots of little small ones uh, in case there is a fire. Yeah. Um, because I, I think I have, mine are only like this big. And I, at one time, I had mounted them at the wall. But just like have them in like every room. Sure. Because the big ones, forget it. You're out, you're going to fall out of your chair and then right. you're in a lot of trouble. And really, they do their work with that first spray, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I would encourage you to continue to ask questions. You're more than welcome to email me at any time. Um, I'll bring some cards down for you. Um, and um, please just, uh, oh, sure. I did uh, just a basic resource list. Um, and as a state organization, I need to say, <laughs> Uh, the resources list are not meant to be all-inclusive and is not an endorsement <laughs> by the University of Washington Medical Center or its employees. This is really just kind of the, you know, the Easter Seals and the various different um, organizations, the Catholic Community Services, Paralyzed Veterans of America. There are some wonderful uh, books put out by uh, the PDA, of which I brought one of them down. Uh, on home accessibility. Uh, there's another uh, book that I brought down for you all to look at called The Right Space and it has incredible detail on how to make some modifications with your existing floor plans and existing space. So um, I know we'd all love to just completely take down all the walls and reconfigure our homes but that's just not possible in many cases. Um, in many cases, it's just a challenge just to get in and out of your house and uh, get to your room and get to a bathroom. Um, again, I did say um, contact your local fire departments 
for the Benevolent Association, contact the union. And for a fire safety check, contact uh, the Prevention Bureau. And um, I also recommend when people are going to hire contractors to do some major remodeling, make sure you get uh, some contacts, references from them. Contact the Master Builders Association. Contact the Better Business Bureau. And just make sure they're on the up and up. And, um, and you can get, um, you can ask for those references. And also to make sure that that they have a good idea on dealing with the accessibility issues. Um, I did include uh, some individuals. I included a uh, architect and a couple of different organizations. I also included um, a couple of different uh, places, a realtor that specializes in renting and finding accessible um, property. And some of, um, there's two of those, uh, the Care Cure community uh, that you can certainly uh, put something on the forum there. And, um, and please, if you have any questions, email me, and I'd be happy to respond to them. Sam, just Good. a final thought came to me just a second ago is that as far as accessibility, and I didn't have it in actually when uh, Chris was out to the house, but I just had a standby generator put in. We don't really think about it as access, but my whole house is backed up now. Within 30 seconds, it's up and running again. Wow. And it's all natural gas-powered standby. So. And that takes some, they need to do some inspections and make sure that uh, your generators are uh, safe and easy to access. And there's some incentive to study the power quality for each generator because it'll have a harmonic distortion. It's too bad if your computer, even with a backup unit, will keep kicking off. So, yeah. Which also reminds me to have your power surge <laughs> cords. Mount them up high, but power surge on all your equipment that you don't want to get ruined. So, yeah. <laughs> To people find, is this the microphone? In regards to people finding apartments, um, because I hadn't had to do that before until recently, a lot of people that you talk to in the offices at apartments, ask them if they have barrier-free apartments. They seem to understand that terminology better than, do you have anything that's accessible to a wheelchair? Because, yeah, barrier-free was like the common word I noticed. They understand that a lot better. It's not up to ADA code because my kitchen's not quite accessible, but the bathroom's bigger, the hallways are bigger. Great. Thank you all for coming. And thank you. Uh, I want to, first of all, thank you. Does anybody have any other specific questions for Pam? Any questions you want answered tonight, please feel free. We'd be able to hang yeah. up for a little bit.